We have all seen the images of Jesus on the cross in movies, in films. What do we understand of this? Why was he suffering on earth? Did Jesus Christ really have to die on the cross? Was he the Son of God? What does his death mean for my life? A victorious Christian life does not end at the cross. It begins from the cross. Do subscribe to this channel and put notifications on to receive the new messages. Matthew 27, 46 About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus Christ was the Son of God. In him was the fullness of God. Jesus was the chosen Messiah who was sent by God to take away the sins of the world. So why did God the Father forsake Jesus on the cross? Jesus took the sins of the world, past, present and future, onto his body. He offered his blood as an eternal sacrifice to God for the redemption of mankind. 1 Peter 2.24 And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, for by his wounds you were healed. After Jesus took the sins of the world onto his body, God the Father had to forsake his Son on the cross as God is righteous. Jesus was crying out because for a time being, God the Father turned away from him. John 19.30 When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus, the Son of God, laid down his life for mankind who were sinners, like a good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. It wasn't the Romans or the devil that crucified Jesus Christ. Jesus willfully laid his life down as a sin offering to God. Romans 5.8 But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Perfect unconditional love was demonstrated at the cross. Jesus did not ask us before dying on the cross. He chose to do so while we were still ignorant of the cross. What was the guarantee that the cross achieved anything? Was God the Father pleased with the sacrifice of his Son? Hebrews 10, 12-14 But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Jesus perfected us in the sight of God the Father. This is the word of God, not human thought or thinking. John 19.30 Jesus said, Tetelestai, which is Greek for it is finished. His work on the cross was complete. Jesus had done his part in the eternal redemption of mankind. So what is our part after all of this? Jesus Christ died for mankind and not a select religion or a select group of people. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The work of Jesus, the Son of God, is finished on the cross. Now it is up to us as human beings to draw this power into our lives. God does not force us. Human beings have a free will and choice. Will we take a chance with God? What are the benefits if we accept the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross? John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through me. The only way we can link or connect with God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible teaches us. The spiritual blessings for those in Christ Jesus are laid out in Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed us in the heavenly realms, chose us to be holy and blameless, predestined us for adoption to sonship, redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins, given us wisdom and understanding, made known to us the mystery of his will, marked us with the seal through the Holy Spirit. These are heavenly blessings which cannot be taken away from a believer in God. Genesis 1 31 God saw all that he had made and it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. After God created mankind he was satisfied. However sin and eternal death entered the world through the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Romans 5.12 Therefore just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. Sin resulted in unrighteousness and spiritual separation from God. But me and you were not involved when Adam and Eve sinned. We inherited the sinful nature from birth. We were born of a corruptible seed. We did not have a choice in the matter. We cannot connect with God unless we are righteous. How do we become righteous? Is there any act of man which pleases God? Romans 3.10 As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. God gave the law for the Israelites to keep, yet no one was found righteous in the sight of God. That is the reason Jesus Christ had to come and fulfill the law. Galatians 3.24 So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. The verse says justified by faith. Through faith we can accept that Jesus is the Son of God and He offered a perfect sacrifice to God the Father for our sins. Jesus was born of an incorruptible seed and not through the desire of flesh and blood. Jesus was born through a virgin birth conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was sinless and in Him no fault was found. His blood was shed on the cross for our sinful nature. Now how do we get into God's kingdom and His destiny for our lives? This is by being born again. Romans 10.9 If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is an act of faith where we accept Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and was raised up for our justification. Our unrighteousness and spiritual separation from God changes to righteousness and relationship with God. We do not choose to be born in this world, but we can choose to be born again in God's kingdom and start our relationship with God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. It does not matter if you are a Christian or not. Jesus Christ died for us because he loved us. Are you willing to take this chance with God? All his spiritual blessings from Ephesians chapter 1 
is for us if we choose to enter into God's destiny for our lives. 1 Peter 1.23 For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. We are called to be conquerors in life and to reign in life by God himself. Get into God's destiny and plan for your life by accepting the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Accept it through faith and be born again in the kingdom of God. Romans 5.17 For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Let's say a prayer. Father God, we thank you for opening our hearts and spirit to you. We accept the sacrifice of your son Jesus on the cross. We believe it through faith and we accept that Jesus was raised from the dead to complete the sacrifice. Thank you for coming into our hearts. Help us to understand more of you, O Lord. We understand that the Christian life does not end at the cross, but begins from the cross. Amen.